could that looks exactly like a deodorant, right? I mean, look at it. My name's Jack, and welcome to another Kit Guru review. This is the ISO collection, a visually striking wireless peripheral set by ASIO that consists of a keyboard, mouse, and numeric pad. Aimed more towards productivity and typists, the set focuses on giving users a feel-good experience when sitting at their desks. That being said, I have tested the keyboard and mouse for gaming, and I'll be giving my opinions later on in the video. Funded on Kickstarter, the set raised over £80,000 or around $120,000 and is currently available to pre-order from the ASIO store. With bold colours, gold accents and rounded keys, the ISO collection definitely looks the part, but at £190 for the whole collection, it certainly isn't cheap. Many of you are probably wondering if this set puts form over function, and in this video we're going to find out. So starting with the ISO keyboard, this comes in at around £102 or $139 US dollars. So this keyboard is definitely in that higher tier price bracket. In my opinion, it certainly needs to do a lot of things right to be worth the price. Especially as most major brand keyboard manufacturers have an offering that's cheaper than this. So let's start off with the packaging. So packaging doesn't usually impress me that much, I'll be quite honest with you, I just get the product out of it and throw it away, but the ISO packaging is really nice for the whole collection. The box has this slip wrap design and features gold foiling on the product illustrations and logo. I've worked in print and gold foiling isn't cheap, so right off the bat we get a sense of premium style here. Under the info wrap we have this pretty basic board packaging, but again we have this really sleek and beautiful gold foiling. So inside the box we get the keyboard itself surrounded by two foam pads, a USB-A to USB-C cable which unfortunately isn't braided and at this price point I really would have liked to have seen a braided cable. Now I understand that ASIO probably expects most people to use this wirelessly, but if you are using this plugged in, this cable just isn't going to look that good. I also really don't like the fact that the blue colour doesn't match the blue of the keyboard. Personally I just preferred a black one at this point. This cable does also feel quite cheap and it's also kinked out of the box so it just looks messy. Inside the box we also get a replacement escape and spacebar keycaps which aren't gold, so if you want to tone down the gold accents on the keyboard you can. Lastly you get a keycap removal tool and the manuals, and no bluetooth adapter is included in the box, so make sure your device is bluetooth compatible or you may need to buy a dongle. So looking at the basic specs, the keyboard features 21 backlight modes, PBT double shot keycaps, Gator and Blue mechanical switches, the keyboard is also Bluetooth 5 and USB compatible which I love, it's also Mac and PC compatible but more on that later. All of the peripherals in the ISO collection work with Windows 10 and above and Mac OS, so if you're someone with an older version of Windows these may not work properly but as these don't have any software they should work fine. So looking at the build quality, right out of the box the build quality of the ISO keyboard is overall pretty good, but oddly it still feels really quite cheap, and the body is made all from ABS plastic. At this price point I'd have liked to have seen a metal chassis for this keyboard, that being said there is no keyboard flex whatsoever when pressing in certain areas of the body, there's no creaking, no odd noises, nothing. So I think we can all admit that the ISO keyboard has a pretty stunning design. And although the keyboard isn't something that I'd necessarily go for myself, I have to admit it's refreshing to see something that's not just black, white or grey. The colourway that I have is called Blue Iris, which has a soft blue-grey tone and I really like this set. You can also get the collection in White Blossom and Baroque Rose colourways. The ISO only has 81 keys and at just 30cm wide and 15cm long, it's definitely a lot smaller than my current keyboard and personally I prefer the compact size of the ISO. The keyboard features a US ANSI layout and there's no numeric pad but we'll come back to the ISO numeric pad later. So as you can see the ISO collection features a nice rounded design pretty much throughout, we've got nice round corners on the keyboard itself as well as rounded keycaps. Now when I first started using this keyboard I must admit I was mistyping a lot of things and misspelling pretty much everything, but that's really just down to the fact that I'm used to a keyboard with sharper edges between each key. Type with this for a while and you definitely get used to it. Surrounding all the keys, the ISO features this debossed rim, which is really nice actually because when the backlighting is on you get this kind of illuminated glow around the keyboard. On top of the keyboard we have 7 LED indicators, 3 for Bluetooth profiles, 1 for caps lock, 2 to show whether you're in PC or Mac mode, and finally the battery indicator light. Let's talk about these gold elements, because these are definitely the standout part of this product. I actually really like the gold elements, and let's compare this keyboard to my current keyboard, the Hex Gears Nova. The Nova looks incredibly boring compared to the ISO. Long term though, I am a bit worried about the spacebar in terms of where, it's one of the keys you're probably going to press the most, and it's just one of those things, from experience, you know that this kind of gold finish tends to wear off. Now whether or not it does, I don't know, but it's something I'd definitely be wary of. Now if you don't like these gold accents, you can replace the escape key and the spacebar key with the white caps that come inside the box, but in terms of the dial, you're stuck with this being gold forever as this isn't removable. The dial is actually something I've never experienced myself on a keyboard, and to be quite honest, this is a great feature. The dial on the ISO doubles up between a volume rocker and backlight control by using the function key. Unfortunately you can't remap the dial to anything else because there's no software, so you are stuck with those two functions. 
At the back side of the keyboard, we have our main toggle switches to switch between USB, Bluetooth, or turning off the keyboard entirely, and we have the USB-C charging port. Now on the underside we have pretty much nothing unfortunately, no legs or ways to adjust angle which I personally don't mind too much, but if you're someone who likes to raise up your keyboard then you might find this to be an issue. This bothered me a bit at first as I prefer a slightly more angled keyboard position, but I got used to it and haven't noticed any fatigue or issues when typing. And we do get these pretty big rubber feet underneath and they do keep the keyboard sturdy when typing. Taking a look now at the keycaps which are probably the most important part of the keyboard, the keycaps we get here are PBT, and in theory they should last a lot longer than ABS keys. They're also double shot, so instead of a single piece of plastic that's been painted and etched, these keycaps feature two pieces of plastic moulded together. This will ensure that the key legends don't wear off, and there won't be any paint wear either, which is something I can already see on my Hex Gears Nova keyboard. The only keys that aren't PBT double shot are the gold escape key and the spacebar. I do wish that ASIO made this clear on the website because they sell this product on PBT double shot keys, and two of the keys which arguably are the most important in terms of the design, the escape key and the spacebar, are just ABS, so that's a bit of a shame. The replacement white escape key and spacebar are PBT double shot though. Now in terms of the actual build quality of these gold keycaps, it's worth mentioning that on the escape key there's this quite ugly bump on the front and back. Now I'm guessing this is from the painting and moulding process, but it really stands out to me and I'd expect a slightly better finish considering not only the price of this keyboard, but the fact that the gold elements are essentially the selling point. The spacebar also has a bit of a rough finish underneath. Now I know that you probably won't ever see this unless you take the keycap off, but again I'd like to see a nicer finish for the price. Now when powered on, the LED backlighting for the keys shines brightly and the legends are extremely clear. Now I'm quite a sucker for good backlighting to be quite honest, so I really appreciate this design. However, there's no RGB for those of you who like RGB lighting. I'll come back to the LED lighting and the modes later on in this video. Now when the LED backlighting is off, you get dark key legends, and this is a design choice by ASIO to give you two different looks. Overall, the keycaps have a great feel to them, and I definitely prefer the matte texture of the normal keys compared to the smooth feel of the spacebar and the escape key, as the smooth texture does feel a bit cheap. The smooth gold texture of the spacebar and the escape key also pick up grease and fingerprints really easily. So one thing I really like about this keyboard is the custom function keys for PC users. Usually they're set to things like brightness and volume, but on the ISO these have various different options for PC. On a PC you can open up your email client, media player, calculator, open a new browser tab and open this PC to view your files. On a Mac you can increase and decrease brightness, launch mission control and open launchpad. You can definitely tell that this keyboard is aimed at productivity rather than gaming for example, and I think that people who use this keyboard primarily for work will find these shortcuts really useful. The ISO keyboard is also PC and Mac compatible and you can switch between the two by pressing FN and the home button. Although I do personally feel like this keyboard is aimed more towards Mac users and that's simply because the command and option keys are backlit but the windows and alt keys aren't. At this price point I'd have liked to have seen replacement keys so you can actually switch them depending on whether or not you're using a Mac or PC. Now if you're wondering about NKRO or N key rollover, you get 6KRO in Bluetooth mode and full N key rollover in USB mode. So in USB mode your computer will register all the key presses. So one of the greatest features of this keyboard is the hybrid connect mode. The ISO keyboard supports hybrid switching between USB and Bluetooth just by using the toggle switch on the back. It also means that if you'd rather just use the keyboard via USB to save the battery life, you can. Now in terms of Bluetooth functionality, the keyboard supports Bluetooth 5 and below and has three Bluetooth profiles for different devices. You can switch between modes just by holding down the function key and pressing 1, 2 or 3. This really couldn't be any easier. When you want to pair the keyboard to your device for the first time, all you need to do is hold down the function key and hold down delete and then the keyboard goes into pairing mode. In terms of battery life, the ISO keyboard has a 5000 mAh battery, which is pretty impressive and ISO have claimed up to a full year of battery life if you use this without the backlighting. In terms of actually charging this battery, it takes around 6 hours from completely flat to fully charge. So with the backlight on, ISO claimed that the battery life should last about 2 weeks, but I've been using this for about 5 days with the backlight on full brightness and I only have about 40% left. So I actually got in touch with ASO in the end to ask them how long the battery life actually should be. If you use this with full brightness, sort of non-stop, how much battery life do you get? And it turns out you get around 28 hours. If you actually think about it, that's not a lot. If you're using this keyboard for eight hours a day for work, that's only three and a half days of battery life. Which I do find a bit disappointing because there's so many keyboards that last longer than this, but I suppose you can save battery life by turning down the backlight. And the keyboard does also go into a power saving mode if you're not using it for a while. 
So when you want to check the battery life on the keyboard, I really like the way that ASIO have implemented this. All you need to do is hold down the function key and press the escape key, and when you do that, the function buttons will light up. So if you have full battery, you'll get F1 to F10 light up, and if you've got 50% battery, it'll be F1 to F5. If the battery life on the ISO does start getting low, the LED on the far right does start flashing red, and then you know to start charging it. The ISO collection doesn't feature any software at all, and personally, I don't really mind. But that does mean we can't get really specific with lighting via software. In order to customise the LED lighting on the keyboard, we need to use the dial. And this really couldn't be any easier. Increasing and decreasing brightness is done just by holding down the FN key and rotating the dial left or right, and this will change the brightness of the LEDs. And the keyboard features 10 steps of brightness. Now if you want to change the lighting patterns on the keyboard, all you need to do is hold down the function key and click the centre of the dial. When you do this, you'll start cycling through 21 different modes, including static, breathing, gradient, shadow, splash, reactive, discrete, row splash, area splash, rainfall, marquee, scattered, starlight, diagonal, raindrop, frequency, snake, wave, drizzle, fountain and spiral. Personally, I'm just a static kind of guy, so I probably won't use many of these features, but if you like all these different animation modes, then you've certainly got plenty to choose from. Now, I will say that I found clicking the dial at times quite difficult, and what I mean by that is that you really do need to press directly in the center. If you press slightly off at the edge, the click just doesn't work, and if you try to click with a flat finger, for example, where pressure is sort of unevenly put onto the dial, it just doesn't work either. So one of the most important things on any keyboard is the switches used. What we have on the ISO are Gatron Blue Mechanical Switches, rated for 50 million actuations, which should last you a long time. For those of you who like modding your keyboards, unfortunately the switches on the ISO are not hot swappable. The blue switches on the keyboard have a nice clicky sound, and they also have a tactile feel with a slight rebound as well. The switches have an actuation force of 60 grams with 4mm of travel distance and 2.3mm travel distance to the actuation point. These aren't as easy to press as Gatron's red switches, but I found them really comfortable for typing sessions. And purely from a typing perspective, I found the keyboard to be fantastic. If you share a workplace with other people, this keyboard may be a bit too loud in a shared workspace, so just bear that in mind. And to kind of prove my point, here's a quick sound test between the ISO keyboard and my Hex Gears Nova. Now, I mentioned earlier on in the video that I would talk a little bit about gaming because I did use this keyboard to play some Rainbow Six Siege and some other stuff as well, and I must say that even with competitive gaming, this was actually a pleasure to use. I'm personally someone that really likes a loud clicky switch, so these blue switches in the ISO are perfect for me. And actually, after using this keyboard for a while, I may even prefer it to the KL Box Brown switches on my Hex Gears Nova. Overall, I think the ISO keyboard has a great feel for typing, and I love the design choices made by ASIO, as well as the compact size. There are plenty of lighting options, and the dial is a great touch that we don't see on a lot of keyboards. The PBT double shot keys have a nice premium feel, and the Gatoron Blue switches feel great for long typing sessions. I also love the ability to just quickly switch between USB and Bluetooth modes. I only really have two major criticisms of the keyboard, the cheap feeling build quality and the price point. At £102, it does just feel overly expensive for what you get, and I think it's pretty obvious that what we're really paying for here is the design. Admittedly, there's not a lot of keyboards out there that do offer the kind of features we get on the ISO as well as the looks, but I really just don't think the price is right. So remember how earlier I spoke about the lack of a numeric pad on the ISO keyboard? Well, that's where the ISO numpad comes in. Priced at £51 or $69.99 US dollars, this definitely isn't a cheap add-on, costing pretty much the same price or more than any other keyboard that includes a numeric pad. Like the keyboard, we get the nice sleek packaging with the gold foiling. Inside the box, you get the numpad, a USB cable, and a user guide. No spare keycaps this time, which is a bit of a shame. I'd have liked to have seen spare keycaps for this price. The numpad is 15 centimeters long, nine centimeters wide, and four centimeters thick, and in my opinion, is actually the perfect size. It weighs 221 grams and definitely has a nice solid feel to it, but again, has that cheap plastic build quality that we have on the keyboard. The numeric pad is built with the same materials as the keyboard, so that's not really a surprise. And we also get those clicky, loud Gatron blue mechanical switches that give nice haptic feedback. And typing on this is just as enjoyable as the keyboard. We also get the same PBT double shot keycaps for long-term usage without wear and fading. Like the keyboard, the numpad has six key rollover via Bluetooth, but full N key rollover via USB. 
It also features the USB Bluetooth toggle at the back, but this time we have a dedicated calculator switch, so you can also use this without a PC and just as a calculator. A pretty expensive one at that, but if you're planning to get the whole set, this is definitely a nice feature to have. In calculator mode, the LCD panel on the numpad activates, and this is actually extremely clear with large and bright numbers. This is refreshing to see because so many calculators are dark and dim. If you're going to use this wirelessly via Bluetooth, you enter pairing mode by holding the function key and then holding down the full stop button. The numpad also features three different Bluetooth profiles just like the keyboard, and you can switch between each profile by holding down function and pressing 1, 2 or 3. And like the keyboard, the numpad also uses Bluetooth 5 and is compatible with old versions of Bluetooth. At the back we also have a USB-C charging port, unfortunately like the keyboard it comes with that USB cable that doesn't match the design colour and isn't braided. And on the underside, like the keyboard, we get four rubber feet and no angle adjustment. Now unlike the keyboard which features a lot of different LED indicators we only get one on the numpad and this shows you when you've got low battery so when it's below 20% it will start flashing red. Now built into the numpad is a 1000 mAh battery. If you plan to use the numpad non-stop in calculator mode with full backlight brightness you'll get around 10 hours of battery life and if you use the numpad non-stop in bluetooth mode with backlight on you'll get around 23 hours. But for most users, you probably won't be using this for 8 hours non-stop with the backlight on, and ASIO claims you should actually get a few weeks of battery life from this. Checking the battery life on the numpad is pretty much the same as the keyboard, except it's just different keys. This time, you hold down the function key and press 0, with keys 0 to 9 representing 10% of charge each. And like the keyboard, a full charge on the numpad takes around 6 hours. Now that's actually what it says in the manual, but I'll be entirely honest with you, if the numpad only has a 1000mAh battery, and the keyboard has a 5000mAh battery, I can't see how they both take 6 hours to charge. I've actually charged the numpad from 0-100% to and it definitely didn't take as long as 6 hours. So in terms of LED backlighting, we do get LED backlighting on the numpad, very similar to the keyboard with white LEDs, however we don't get as many animations this time, with only 9 on the numpad compared to the 21 on the keyboard. Which in my opinion is a bit annoying because if there's a pattern that you really like from the keyboard that isn't on the numpad then unfortunately you can't match them up. Increasing and decreasing the backlight on the numpad is fairly straightforward, you just hold down the function key and press either plus or minus. Not as fun as the keyboard using the dial but it works just the same. Overall the numpad is a nice addition to the set and I like the fact that it's got all the premium features of the keyboard like the Gatron blue switches and the PBT double shot keys. But I don't know if it's worth £50, I mean that's expensive for a numeric pad. And unless you use a numeric pad day in and day out, I don't really know if this is worth it. And it's definitely nice to have as part of the set and the fact that it blends in perfectly with the keyboard, it's just a bit pricey for a numeric pad. Finally, moving on to the mouse, this in my opinion is the least exciting item in the set. The mouse is also the cheapest of the set, costing £37 or $49.99 US dollars. Similar to the keyboard and numpad, we get the nice sleek packaging. We also get another non-braided blue USB cable and I'll never understand why these blues don't match. And as you expect, we also get a user manual. And I'd just like to take a moment at this part in the video to say that ASIO have done a really good job with the manuals, they're really clear and easy to understand. I think pretty much anyone could buy a product from this set and understand how to use it, so great job on the manuals. The design of the mouse follows this same three-tone look from the keyboard and numpad. This time we have a white bottom half, blue upper and gold accents, including a gold strip across the whole mouse. I also like the fact that the logo sits kind of above the actual plastic interior of the mouse, so you get this shadow underneath. So on the spec sheet, the mouse weighs 87 grams and is 6.4 centimeters wide and 10.4 centimeters long. Here it is compared to my Razer Death Adder. The ISO mouse is supposedly only 5 grams heavier than my 82 gram Razer Death Adder, but it felt much heavier when I got it out of the box. So I actually weighed them, and in fact the ISO mouse is actually 92 grams with the RF dongle and 90 grams with it taken out. So up to 5 grams heavier than it should be and maybe that should be updated on the spec sheet. So on the underside of the mouse we have two Teflon pads, a switch to change between Bluetooth, off and RF mode, a connect button that also doubles as a DPI switch, a sensor, and a little slot here for the RF USB dongle. At the front we have a USB-C charging port, and at least they didn't follow Apple's design and stick it underneath. Pretty much all the design of this mouse feels quite cheap to me, and it does creak and make noises as well if you press it in certain places. The gold scroll wheel for example feels really cheap and I can see that ASIO's kind of avoided using any rubber on here but it doesn't feel good at all when you're scrolling with it and it just feels so cheap. And as for this gold strip that goes across the whole mouse, this is very similar to the plastic used on the spacebar and in my opinion as this is something you are going to touch a lot, it's probably going to wear down over time. And like the gold keycaps on the keyboard, this also picks up grease and fingerprints really easily. 
So ASIO explains that the design here is inspired by the luxurious feel and look of cosmetic bottles, which I can't personally say I've ever thought are luxurious or cared much about them, but I don't think I'm the target demographic. Now I must admit that the bottom frosted section on this mouse is certainly unique, but I don't know about it looking luxury. If anything to me, it looks like a deodorant roll on. I mean, look, could, that looks exactly like a deodorant, right? I mean, look at it. So yeah, the mouse in my opinion feels the cheapest out of the lot, and it's a bit of a weird shape as well. The mouse reminds me of the Apple mouse from like 2005, except this is just worse to hold. And this is partly down to the fact that it's an ambidextrous design, so it works with people that are left and right handed. Now I'm used to a mouse that's for right handed people, so maybe that could be why I find this uncomfortable, but I don't know, it just doesn't feel that comfortable to me. Now in terms of hand grips, I have to say that if you're a palm user, you might find this mouse really uncomfortable. The left and right click are also really hard to press with the palm grip, and it takes a lot of force on the bottom of your finger. I even found myself needing to click twice because my first try just didn't register as I just couldn't get enough force behind it. Claw grip and fingertip grip are probably the best grips here, with fingertip grip having a slight edge and just feeling a little bit better. Again, this is to do with the angle and pressing on the mouse buttons, it just feels easier pressing it with your fingertips than with the bottom of your finger. Movement with the mouse is fairly smooth due to the Teflon feet underneath, but not quite as smooth as my Razer Death Adder V2 and there does seem to be some resistance. So in terms of connections, that's where this mouse really shines. The ISO mouse supports Bluetooth and RF connections, the latter via a dongle. Unfortunately, unlike the keyboard, we don't have a USB only mode, so you have to use this wirelessly. Now the mouse uses Bluetooth 3 or newer and 2.4 GHz radio frequency via the USB dongle. Now connecting your device via the RF dongle is easy. Just take out the dongle from the bottom of the mouse, plug it into your computer, and then toggle the switch underneath to RF mode, and it should connect pretty much instantly. If you want to use this mouse in Bluetooth mode, just make sure the switch is on Bluetooth, hold down the connect button, and a blue light underneath will start flashing quickly to show you're in pairing mode. Then just connect it to your device as you do everything else. Now as there's no software, changing DPI is done from the bottom of the mouse as well. This time you just have to press the connect DPI button once, each DPI step is signalled by a flashing light. So one blue flash for 1000 DPI, two flashes for 1600 DPI, and three flashes for 2400 DPI modes. Battery life is also another strong point on the mouse, we have a 1000 mAh battery built in that ASIO claims will last over 200 hours of use, so you'll be able to use this for over a week without needing to charge it, although this isn't quite as good as the Apple Magic Mouse which lasts nearly a month. So the sensor in this mouse is kind of underwhelming, it's the Pixar Poor 3212 optical sensor. Unfortunately there's not that much information about the sensor online, but what I can tell you is that this is a budget sensor, so I'm not really sure what this sensor is doing in a luxury mouse. For those of you who like to know your numbers, the mouse has 30 IPS tracking and 10 Gs of acceleration. I didn't notice any jitter or lag when using the mouse, and any issues that I did have with precision were probably down to the fact that the mouse buttons are so hard to press, which would sometimes make the mouse move a little bit if I was trying to press the buttons. Now I know a lot of those numbers are marketing buzzwords for FPS mice, but I actually tried this with some FPS games and it was not a great experience. The mouse just felt clunky, slow and hard to use, and not just because of the sensor, but because of that left and right click needing so much force, as well as the uncomfortable shape. It just doesn't feel good for gaming. And when I finished playing, my forearm and top of my hand and fingers actually hurt quite a lot. So from that alone, I can't recommend this for gaming. Overall, this mouse really doesn't offer a lot to get excited about for £37, and there are definitely better options out there for this price. On the plus side, I do like the fact that this mouse does come with an RF dongle as well as Bluetooth modes in case you don't have Bluetooth. The fact they've managed to keep this design consistent throughout the entire range is really nice. Maybe I can recommend this mouse for someone who just wants to do work and have a nice looking mouse, but I definitely can't recommend this for FPS gaming or anything like that. Overall, the ISO collection offers a truly unique, great looking set of peripherals, but each one has its own shortcomings with the mouse being the worst of the bunch with the low quality sensor and cheap feeling build quality, and for £37 in the UK, there's so many alternatives for a better mouse experience. Now I asked at the beginning of the video whether or not the ISO collection puts form over function, and I have to say for the most part I think it does. The keyboard is probably the best of the set, offering great features including Bluetooth and USB hybrid mode, the dial for volume and backlight adjustment is a great addition, and I love the clicky Gatron Blue mechanical switches, which has made typing a real pleasure for me. Unfortunately the keyboard is let down by its cheap feeling build quality when you take into consideration the price. But given the strongest features are to do with the typing experience and that's what a keyboard is made for, I can actually see myself recommending this if you're someone who does a lot of typing. But if you want to save yourself some money and don't really care that much about the ISO design, then there are plenty of more affordable keyboards out there. 
Now finally, the numpad. Now this is probably an item you'd get just because you've already got the rest of the set. The fact this actually has a calculator mode is a nice addition though, and at least it then gives it some other features. I just wish it was priced a little bit better, because at £51 or 70 US dollars, this has got to be one of the most expensive numeric pads I've ever seen. That being said, there's not that many numpads out there that offer mechanical keys, PBT double shot keycaps, calculator mode, or look as good as this. So that brings me to the end of my review of the ASIO ISO collection. What do you think? Let us know in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like. It really helps out the Kit Guru YouTube channel. If you want to see more from Kit Guru, be sure to subscribe and hit that little alert button as well, and you'll be notified when we upload something new. Be sure to check us out on social media for the latest updates and support us on Patreon. And if you want to pick up a cool t-shirt like the one I've been wearing throughout this video, be sure to check out the merch links in the description. So that's pretty much it from me. My name's Jack, you've been watching Kit Guru, and hopefully I'll see you in another video soon.